Well, welcome back to the, show, to the bench here. And I just got done making uh, four feet for the grasshopper clock. Uh, they've not been buffed and polished or anything like that. They've just been made and sanded. Uh, everything will get buffed and polished at the end. But here's how the feet work. They'll be sitting like about like that. Let me get this up a little bit. And it uh, keeps the uh, frames up high enough to get the mainspring barrel in there. And uh, so that's a, uh, there, I use a trebaining bit to cut the taper. And I make a form tool to cut the radiuses with. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead down to the shop and uh, cut a piece of brass and uh, get started on this. Okay, I'm cutting a piece of brass here. Uh, I'm going to be making uh, four feet for the uh, W.R. Smith grasshopper clock. Quick face of the uh, piece after cutting it. I'm peck drilling right now. I need to get all the way through the entire length. Uh, so uh, I'm just carefully peck drilling in and don't want that brass to grab my bit here. Alright, so the white lines there show the piece of brass that I just cut off and faced and centered. Uh, the red is the, pe the part that we need to get out of that piece of brass. And you can see that the first two cuts are shoulder cuts on the front there. So let's go back to the lathe. This is the first of two shoulder cuts to be made on this lathe. This is the second shoulder cut. And that's where we are with our piece right now. The shoulder cuts are both done. So now we're getting ready to move in and we're going to cut the taper. This is a trepaining bit that I drew, uh, that I made some time ago. Uh, you can see the top has been modified. The top rake is zero for brass, but I often make it a uh, six five degrees for brass or for aluminum or steel. These cuts now, I'm just removing brass. Uh, I don't care about the finish so much. Just going back and forth and removing brass. But you can see on the left in, left side there, there's that shoulder. And now we're moving up here to the right and you can see that the line that I have to get to. Well I need to meet that line and get rid of that shoulder on the same pass. So we're going to have to stop here in a minute and uh, make an adjustment. The taper I think is just not quite right on this cross side right now. I take the tailstock out. I'm going to tap the cross slide a little bit and uh, get it into shape. I've still got enough meat. I can do a couple of adjustments if I need to. I think I'm going to need one more adjustment. I'll do the adjustment up at the top. Yeah, that worked quite well.
getting close up right on this line there we go Alright, so that's now what our parrot looks like. And our last cut, the final cut, will be on the end there. And this will be our final cut here on this back side. let's have a look yep yeah, there we go now we're ready to cut those radii I'm cutting a piece of uh, water hardening tool steel here that will make the bit out of it. squaring it up on the mill Just putting a uh, 3 16 hole in the end here. I've centered it up and centered it. And roll through. Now we really need to have a, uh, a bit of a uh, relief on this hole. So I'm using this uh, bit here, to, uh, a little shop made bit made from spring steel. That's just giving us a little relief for our form tool. Now I'm adding a little 10 degree front relief for there. The side relief is put on over at the grinder. And polish it up good before we, uh, we harden it. It quenches in the water. And there we go, the file's just skating over it. It's good and hard. Tempering it up now at the straw. It's really, you can watch the uh, heat go right up to the end. Polish it up just a little bit. And we'll make a test cut in a piece of brass here. Notice near the end here, it's got a little bit of a uh, squeak to it. So that's not going to work so good. And you'll see on the left here, uh, that's the one that had the squeak. You can see the chatter mark. And then in the other end, I put a little bit of relief on either side and just plunged the cutter in with the relief on the side. That worked pretty well. So now I know the depth that I need to go to, and I know that I need to have my sides in pretty. Okay, this is our first plunge cut. I've sped it up a little bit. I like making plunge cuts on the shoreline. I have much, uh, uh, it's much easier to control the speed even during the cut. These cuts are coming out quite nice. Okay, this is a number two uh, Swiss made crossing file, I believe. It's a number two though. Just to clean up the edges and make see how see what I got. Now 
Now we're going to cut the back off of uh, this piece. It's, uh, I used it for holding it in place. And I've got a good turn on kind of fast, and I'll slow it down until I get to the right speed that I'm looking for. Okay, I think I'll slow it down a little bit. And that sounded a lot better there. Alright, that's got it right there. Okay, I just sped it up here. Uh, make a good match, sped the uh, filming up, not the lathe up. And we'll clean up the bottom right to the edge of the plunge cut. Put a little relief here in the center so that it sits level. So the hole was cut for a 632 screw, so now I'm opening it up because on the bottom I'm going to put a 1032. So we're tapping now to 1032. I got a piece of scrap aluminum and uh, going to screw that in there. And that'll allow us to do our finish polishing on the piece. Start with a little bit of 400. Normally I'd be hitting it with 800 right now, but uh, my 800 stick was kind of buggered up, so uh, I'm using 1200. This is foam back sandpaper. It's good for doing the radiuses. Very, uh, very good for uh, curved surfaces. And now we're over on the granite, marking the final to cut off the final piece here. A little tricky. The aluminum doesn't hold it quite on center. I'm a lot further away from the headstock than I'd like to be. And now we use the 632 tap, tap a hole in it. Well, the feet are all done now, all four of them. They've been sanded, but of course they won't be buffed and polished until near the end. There's still a lot of work that needs to go on with the clock, and I'll be touching them and so on and so forth. So uh, uh, that'll be it for the feet for a while anyway. Now in the next video, we will uh, drill and tap the bottom of the, uh, the plates to accept the feet and then we'll build the pillars that go between the two plates and I'm not sure if I'll have time or not to show you all on that one video but I also have to make uh, uh, some uh, washers and some screws uh, which I probably will uh, make on a separate video but we'll see but anyway I want to uh, thank you all for stopping by and uh, I hope I'll see you next time uh, thanks a lot bye now